Hi, welcome to Burning River Bushcraft. Today we're going to be making a slate turkey call. So we're out here in the river today. Uh, behind me you can see there's a whole wall of shale. This whole area is just filled with shale and slate. Uh, the problem today is not going to be finding it. I'm walking all over it. The trouble is going to be finding a thick enough piece. This stuff is, uh, this one's not too bad thickness wise. This one's not bad either. What I'm looking for is uh, something that's relatively flat. I can work it a little bit. Uh, I'm looking for something maybe the size of the palm of my hand. So I'm in kind of a shallow area of the river right now. Uh, it's been raining a little bit, so the water's kind of high. I'm going to dig through behind me here and see what I can find. So tons and tons of options. This is a pretty good piece right here. Uh, this one's got a little bit of color to it. This uh, this is probably shale here. It doesn't have a like a glass sound to it. This is probably a, a slate. It's got a different, almost sounds like a glass. This is probably gonna work a little bit better for the call if I can get it into the shape I'm after. If not, this one here is a little duller, but the shape is almost right what I'm after from the get-go. Um, I've got a dry rock over here. I'm going to try napping this into uh, kind of a round shape and see which one's going to work best for me. So I've got a sandstone hammer stone here, and I'm just going to try to try to get the shape I'm after. See, that's what I'm talking about. Some of this stuff is just too, too brittle. I'm going to try these real hard sounding ones. It almost looks like a piece of... Uh, like an obsidian or a flint of some type.
There's one right in front of me that looks better than the ones that I picked out. It's uh, quite a bit smoother. There's a good spot up right here. Here's another good one. This is shale, this is a lot softer. This stuff's like dime a dozen. I'm gonna take a piece. Take a piece about like this. I'll kind of get the edges off a little bit. And I'll give it a sound test before I proceed. So I'll make a, a striker for this turkey call uh, without the box, and I'll just make some noise with it. I'll check my best option. And then, just to be different here, I'm not, I have no idea what this one is. This is uh, relatively flat. I like the shape. It's a pretty darn thick. Uh, I'm going to call this like a, just a straight sandstone. I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to hit this pretty hard, see if it flakes at all. Uh, see if I can get some kind of shape with it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that is. Something inside. It looks uh, flint-ish, I would say. the stone behind me as an anvil. Try to knock this heavy corner off real quick. So this is just eating up the hammer stones. Again, this is all just found in a field here. Grab uh, the next size up. Uh, this one's not sandstone. And it seems like it's holding up a little bit better. But that stuff's flaking pretty good. This might be even nappable. But for right now, just trying to get this into a circular shape. You know, that's it's on the verge of being a cutting tool already. So I've got some options here. Nothing's quite round, but everything's kind of round-ish. So the next step in this process is I'm going to make a striker. Uh, and then I'm going to do a couple sound tests real quick, see if this is going to be worth my while. And then I'm going to harvest a little green uh, stump of a tree and go ahead and set this into uh, some wood and make it easier to hold. And that's also going to give it a sound chamber where it's going to sound a little bit better. So. Nothing's quite perfect here, but I'll take all this home uh, and then kind of go through it a little bit, see what's going to work the best. So I'm just getting back on the slate turkey call. 
I started this before turkey season, so that would have been like late March, early April, something like that. I intended to have it done for spring turkey season. Obviously, I'm not going to work out for that. Uh, possibly fall. I mean, shoot, the way I'm getting my projects done here, this might be next spring. But I had a chance today, and I wanted to go out and continue on it. So I still have the same haversack. I never even took the, uh, the rocks that we found out of it. Uh, right now, I'm going to just try to find an appropriate sized log that's going to be about the right diameter for this and then I'll go ahead and hollow it out and trim and it down. I'm not real picky about the type of wood I just want it to be dry. I'm looking for dead wood for this. Green would be a lot easier to carve but I'm going to end up gluing this in with pine pitch so I don't have a lot of options as far as shrinkage goes. I don't want to be screwing around with this and have to re-glue it uh, because we're looking at October, November before I would get to use this for fall birds. Uh, if I don't get this done, then we're looking at next April or May for spring birds. So I'm just gonna cut into this. It's kinda hard to gauge the diameter until you cut into it. So I'm gonna go down the trunk a little bit. Make sure this thing's not too eat up with bugs. It's definitely stone dead. So it should be as dry as you're gonna get. So I got a lot of different options as far as the slate for this. This one's the hardest and the flattest. See, I almost got like an obsidian look to it. If we look at it on the wood, it's a little, uh, little small. I'm gonna just try to round it up just a little bit. All right, so this is what we're using. This is the rock. This is the uh, chunk of limb that we're gonna use. Now I'm just gonna trace around the edge and I'm gonna hollow this out, but I'm gonna get in some shade and get this done. Now inside this, I'm going to give myself about a quarter inch loop uh, shelf. So I have to take the outside line down the thickness of the stone itself. And then the inside part, I'm just going to go deep with it. I'm going to go as deep as I, I can get easily. I'm not going to kill myself on this thing. I'm going to be using my flex cut. Maybe I'll try the chisel first, or the gouge. So I've got the perimeter done with this uh, gouge. I'm gonna switch tools, try to horse out some of the middle now that I've got my center established. So it took a lot of screwing around here, but I believe using the uh, blade on the flex cut, I was able to choke up on the blade quite a bit and just follow the pencil line and score it. And then I switched over to this flat blade, uh, the flat chisel blade, and 
it looks like it's under somewhat controlled manner I can pull off decent sized chunks. So we can see how it's turned out here. I'm about a quarter inch deep on this piece. I have a lip that's maybe maybe a sixteenth, maybe an eighth. And then I can press fit this into place. And it's sitting pretty level. That's my main thing. It's uh, almost a friction fit. Just kind of almost pops out. So that means there's enough room for the pine pitch glue to fit down in here. So I was getting ready to glue the stone to the wooden base that I made for the slate turkey call. And to be honest, I was only going to friction fit the striker. Uh, but since I've got glue and it's going to be hot, I thought I'd just take a second and cut and straighten a, uh, a dowel to use for my striker. Uh, I probably could use anything. I'm going to use hardwood. Traditionally, that's what's used is a charred piece of hardwood. So I got this little piece of hickory here that I found a dead branch. Uh, because this is going to be glued into place, I don't want to use anything green. I'm sure if you had just a green striker it would work just the same. But then I would have to go back and reseed it and refit it once it shrinks down. So this sucker's dead as a doornail. I'm looking for a striker, you know, maybe hand width, so maybe seven, eight inches. As far as diameter goes, anything uh, like dowel size, so like a big uh, pencil, like a kid's pencil would probably work just fine. Alright, so here's the slate striker, about as good as I feel like making it right now. This is going to be the end point, I'm going to char this. And I just put a taper on this end. Now, traditionally these are going to be topped off with like a corn cob or something. It's going to give it a little deeper tone, uh, let the sound carry a little bit further. Uh, a lot of the modern calls, they'll use a plexiglass striker and sometimes some hardwood for the end. But it'll make it easier to handle and it'll sound just a little bit truer and have a better tone to it. Alright, so I brought out a homemade awl and these corn cobs are pretty soft. I'm going to tilt right down the center. Just try to work my way through it. This corn cob is not too dried out. Uh, if you try to force it too much, a lot of times they'll just split on you. So take it easy on these things. And we're going to end up cutting the top of this off. So you got to kind of keep an eye about or an idea how deep you are so we're probably going to cut this one right about here somewhere so pine pitch is a pretty cool thing to carry around uh, it's great for making fire obviously it's super duper flammable uh, but it's great to repair gear with primitively and if you don't have anything else, it's great to know. Uh, I'll do a video on this when the uh, proper time of year comes. Right now the sap's not really rising in the trees and I'm having uh, not a lot of luck getting pine sap from the limited pine trees that I have available. But it's basically pine sap, charcoal, and some type of binding agent. I've used grass, I've used uh, cattail fluff, uh, manure I think is what this is, dried uh, deer manure. Alright so I'm gonna start with the most important thing that's gonna be getting the slate to the wood and I'm just gonna give this a nice decent coat and then just press fit it in. Okay, now this is just going to get pressed into place. I've just
just got what little bit is left. And I'm going to go ahead and seek that in. There we go. So I've got the burner back on again. The last thing I'm going to do is just char the end of this. The original uh, slates were always charred. And I've actually got a, an aluminum an aluminum slate that uh, it's got a charred into it too and I just always learned with those things you never touch it never touch the charred end uh, try not to touch the slate if you can just because the oils in your hand changes the tone of the call that's nice Alright, I'm going to move away from that stove before I die of a heat stroke out here. But this is awesome. It looks cool. Uh, it's 100% functional. Uh, it's pretty much right off the landscape. Uh, very, very minimal tools that I had to do to make this. I'm sure I could have burned this in if I didn't have a flex tool uh, carving jack. Uh, this did a better job, but whatever. Now as far as making noise on this thing, you're going to hold it kind of like a pencil. You can make clucks, just the soft strike. And uh, depending on pressure, and because this is a uh, variable on the bottom, it's got different tones depending on where you hit it on the slate. I'm going to get different noises out on the end than I will down here in the middle. So a cluck is just a basic hen sound. Uh, gobblers do it too, usually you're trying to draw the gobblers to you. I can do yelps with this, just small circles. I can do tree yelps in the morning, nice soft yelp. I can increase the pressure, increase the volume. Cool. All right, only thing left to do with this is wait till turkey season to kill something with it. But this has been a cool project, uh, something I've been thinking about for quite a while and finally got done. Just it was a little too late in the year to go kill a turkey with it right now. So this will have to get pushed off to fall. But till then, this has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you soon.